So you see that the base of Mikdash is very precious to Hashem, that it's not just dollar, in Gullus, it's been dollar dollar shahalacha, that Hashem is only to be found in the four L's, or the four Amos of the Torah, and when we learn, we bring Hashem down. But Hashem yearns for more than that. Hashem yearns for there to be a place in Yerushalayim where he again lives with the entire Jewish people, and we have to do more. There's a medrash that uh, Rabbi Kana brings. I don't have the name of it. The medrash says that, that the Jewish people, Hashem says to them, sages of the world, I know that your Torah is precious to you. I, I think it's Psikta Rebasai. He says, I know that the Torah is precious to you. And another Girsa says, I know the Torah is precious to me, but you're not doing right. You're only waiting for my Torah all these years, and you're not waiting. <laughs> you're not waiting for my Malchus. What does this mean? It doesn't mean that they were waiting for the Torah. They were learning the Torah, Yom Velayla, for thousands of years, and they're not waiting for anything. You know, Hashem is saying, just like you were constantly involved in my Torah, I expect you to be constantly involved with trying to proclaim my malchus and bring my malchus to, be, to bear. It, you're not supposed to just sit back and wait for me to do it. You're supposed to actively, and this is what the, um, uh, this is what uh, Rabbeinu Yerucham, the famous mashkiach, Ruchni, of the Mir Yeshiva, he, 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 he didn't write it, his Talmidim wrote it, his shmuzim, he brought, he brought down, he said, what is the purpose of the Torah? If you have to sum it up, he said, in one goal, in one midah, what is the purpose of the Torah for, and the creation of the world from the beginning of time to the end of time, from the beginning of the Torah to the end of the Torah? And he says, the one purpose is, Hashem wanted there to be a people that belonged to him, that he could give his Torah to, and that they should march into Eretz Yisrael and conquer it and build him a base of Mikdash and proclaim him Melech over the whole world. That's the goal of the Torah. So if we're not thinking in those terms, no matter how great we're learning, we're not doing what Hashem has put in, in the Torah for us to do. Rabbi Yerucham is, is one of the biggest Tamil Chacham and Gedolim of his generation. He's not a lightweight, he's not some insignificant figure. If he says this, we should take it to heart. In fact, there's a Yushalmi in Meiser Shani 5.2 that says the base of Mikdash will be built, the base of Mikdash will be built before Mashiach ben David comes. And so the question is, how could that be? The Sefer Yecheskel, the last 10 prakim of Sefer Yecheskel is all about the third base of Mikdash. And we completely don't understand what he's talking about, so how could we build that? So it says that he'll build the, either Meshach ben Yosef, or we, if, if we don't have Meshach ben Yosef, we are supposed to build the second base of Mikdash over again. And when Meshach ben David gets here, he's going to renovate it into what Yechesko was given a Nevoah to make the third base of Mikdash. He'll be a Navi, Meshach. And that's what it means that the, Torah, the base of Mikdash will come down from Shemaim through the Nevoah of Mashiach ben David to renovate the base of Mikdash and, and, to, and to make it into what Yechezkel's vision was, the way Hashem wants the third base of Mikdash to be. But it shouldn't stop us in Mesectus Midos and Mesectus Tamid. It explains the whole thing, what the, the base of Mikdash Shani looked like, and we could build it today. We could have built it 54 years ago if we had the courage and we had the uh, will a strong enough will to do it. I'll just close on this, medri on this Yushalmi. The Yushalmi says that the base of Mikdash will be built before Mashiach ben David is here. And the gra on the page agrees with this shot. There's Machlokas, is this true or not? And the gra is noted to this shot. And what's the shot? The shot is that the, um, the Nevoa. The Nevoah of Yaakov Avinu to Yehuda and his blessing, his bracha to him before he died. The bracha was that he'll be a wash in, in the blood of wine. I want, part of the part of the, the of the nusach there is the part of the bracha is about wine. 
And so there was a decree in the second base of Mikdash that anybody who was close enough to see Yerushalayim was obligated, Durabanan, obviously, obligated to bring grapes from Meiser Shani to the base of Mikdash because there was a vast shortage of grapes in the time of the second base of Mikdash because there was not enough wine to do the avoda in the base of Mikdash and to have grapes for Bikurim and grapes for Meiser Shani. And therefore, they made a decree that people had to bring grapes. Otherwise, they could have brought other fruit or they could have brought their Meister Shani in, in the form of money, and they could buy meat and, and drink and food, vegetables, whatever, and they would never have to have, but they wanted to beautify Yerushalayim for the Meister Shani, for the Bikurim, and so they've made a decree, you have to, you have to bring this, uh, uh, these grapes if you're close enough to the walls of Yerushalayim. And then when the base mixture was destroyed, was left the remnant of the, uh, of the Chachamim in, in Yavna. They made a decree that they were mavatal this. Um, I, I don't know why they had to be mavatal it. There was no, I don't think, or maybe there still was Meister Shani that you could bring to Yerushalayim, even though the Beis Amikdash is destroyed. You, could, you were still mechoyiv to bring your Meister Shani. I don't know if this is true or not. I have to check it out. But anyway, they were mavatal the decree. But they left it open, should that the base of Mikdash comes back, whenever that is, this gazer that we had given over on Klal Yisrael will be reinstated. And it will come back, and you're going to have to uh, abide by it and bring grapes again, because there will be a vast shortage and a great need to turn all the grapes in Eretz Yisrael into the wine to do the avoda of the yain, uh, nisuch yain. And you have, to bring, you have to bring your grapes, whatever's left over, to beautify Yerushalayim with, with the Mahana Yerushalayim with the, with the fruit of the perus of the grapes. And so the Gemara there says this is the proof that the Beis Mikdash is going to be built before Mashiach ben David. Because if it's Mashiach ben David from Shevet Yehuda, there won't be any shortage of wine anymore. Like other Nevoos talk about, you'll have the harvest meeting, the planting and the, and the growing, and the, the one harvest will lead into the, in, into the next season. There'll be a wash, just like the bracha of Yaakov will be Mekuyim to, to Shevet Yehuda, that there'll be plenty of wine. So therefore, the plenty of grapes, you won't need this Gezerah to abundant. So therefore... That's the proof, and the Gra agrees with it, that the base of Mikdash will be d- built by us. Meshach ben Yosef, Hastis, I don't know, whatever. whatever. I mean, obviously, we're not getting our act together to go do it, even though the Rambam says we have a mitzvah to do it. The Rambam says, in, in Beis of Bechira 1.1, he says, based on the Pasuk and Truma, Asul Mikdash v'shachan tu b'socham, it says it's a mitzvah, al Kozaman, the base of Mikdash is not standing. It's a mitzvah on every Jew, every gadol, man, woman, everyone has a mitzvah to build the base of Mikdash. Elamai, what does he say at the end of his magnum opus? In, in, in Sefer Malachim Um Mochamos, he says at the end that one of the simanim that the, the, the person who is Mashiach is, besides the wars and besides being Machnes, Arba, Kamphos, or it's all the Jews back there at Stroh, is he'll build the base of Mikdash. So, Binyamin Khan asks, so which is it? Is it our mitzvah to do? Like the Raman says in Beis of Bechira? Or is it the mitzvah of, of the of Mashiach to build the base of Mikdash? And he answers and he says, obviously it's our mitzvah to do, based on the Pasuk Asuli Mikdash. And if we don't do it, so Mela, the Mashiach's going to have to do it. Because we fell down on it. And I pointed out many times to people that Rambam could never be Masig, that there'll be Jews in Eretz Yisrael with bilis over military and political control over Eretz Yisrael. He couldn't even, 800 years ago, he couldn't even be Masig, there would be Jews like that that wouldn't build a base of Mikdash, Nebuch. We, we have the, the government Nebuch that we have. That is the Rishoim Shav Rishoim Erev Rav. And so he couldn't be Masik that there would be these kind of Jews there. He thought either we'll be in Gullus to the very end, and there will be no choice but Mashiach will have to lead the building of the base of Mikdash, or we'll go back early, even without Mashiach, somehow get back to Eretz Yisrael, and of course we'll build it because we have a mitzvah to build it. So that's the, that's the I, I have much more here to talk about. I don't want to be, belabor the point, nor do I want to. Do, nor do I want to um, 
you know, I don't want to trouble you. I think there is more, much more we can be doing to try, not just in davening, not just in learning the mitzvahs, but in calling out for fellow Jews to, to have this as a campaign. More than a campaign to bring Mashiach, we need a campaign to build the base of Mikdash. That's something that can unify every Jew in the world, and that's what we should be concentrating on. Shvotov, Shvotov. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, we're not going to get into that. I have so much more. <laughs>